For in this city, for every city and countryside, and for the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Memorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious, Lady Thales, hope us, never virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other, and all our life unto Christ our God.
mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation for the servants of God, the brethren of this holy temple, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Again, we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and all venerable temple, for those who labor and those who sing, and for all the people here present who await thy great and rich mercy.
Amen. Sprasnikam. Sprasnikam. Keep high the feast day. Brothers and sisters, I greet you as we celebrate this Lord's Day and we continue to celebrate the feast of the exaltation of the precious and life-giving cross. We're also celebrating the memory of the great martyr of Stafios and his family. He has a really fascinating story. He was a, a great general uh, and leader uh, in the Roman army. And one day, he went out hunting, and he saw a stag. And in the antlers of the stag, he saw the image of the cross, and a voice spoke to him, saying, Seek out a priest and get baptized. So that's what he did. Those of you that are familiar, and I don't want to give away too much with the Jägermeister bottles, you'll, rem <laughs> you'll notice that image that's on the Jägermeister bottle of the stag with the cross in the middle of the... just wanted you to connect it with something that you've seen before. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. And so he saw this image and heard this voice. And obviously he was a man who was seeking the Lord. And the Lord appeared to him. And he received baptism. And he decided that he was going to go off from the place where he lived near Rome. And was going to go to Egypt to live a quiet and peaceful life. And that's the last thing that happened. <laughs> As it happens sometimes, right? We think to ourselves, I'm really going to dedicate myself now, and everything from now on is just going to be really smooth. His life was one of great struggle. His wife was captured. His children were captured. He didn't see them for years. The hymnography that we heard tonight said that his life was like that of Job. Where he cried out with the blessed Job, The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This great general of Rome ended up becoming a manual laborer, completely anonymous. Until there was a great war that came out, and someone recognized him. He was brought before the emperor and was asked to lead men in battle once more. And he did so, and he did it really well. Helping secure victory but the emperor who had welcomed him back died, and another emperor, Hadrian, took over. And this emperor wanted all of his generals and all of his leaders to offer sacrifice, and Aristophilus refused. His wife, his children, who were since found, and he himself, all received the crown of martyrdom. The cross, brothers and sisters. The cross of trying to live a life in Christ that is, has integrity doesn't always lead to smooth sailing. And I think we all experience that in some way or another. But the thing that distinguishes a Christian in the midst of struggles is a deep and abiding faith. That God will take all of the crooked ways and make them straight. That he will dry all of the tears. That even if we struggle in this life, that we'll be rewarded in the life that is to come, which is real life, eternal life. And we have the martyrs brought before our remembrance on so, in so many occasions. And we have the cross of our Lord that's in the center of the church, to remind us of that simple truth. Because I don't know about you, when I hit some sort of resistance, I automatically think to myself, is this worth it? What am I doing wrong? I thought that if I said my prayers in the morning and read my scriptures, everything was going to go okay for me. See, we make a bargain with God, which is not the bargain he made with us. So we have to look to the lives of the martyrs and their place before us to remind us of what the true value of Christianity is. And it's that it can help us raise ourselves above our circumstances. That even if we suffer and, and experience difficulties, um, we'll have, as the Apostle Paul says, 
that peace of God that surpasses all understanding, that that will fill our minds and hearts through Christ Jesus. So as we continue this celebration of the cross, as we remember the life of Eustachios and his family, let's also be those who through Christ are risen above the circumstances we find around us. Even this seven-month-long insanity that we are experiencing right now, where, you know, half the time we can only see half of each other's faces and all that other sort of jazz. I mean, it, it is what it is, and I think we all can say we've had moments of struggle in the midst of this and many other things. But our faith is that kind of faith that can raise us up above those circumstances and give us a clearer view, one that allows us to peek into the kingdom of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Sprazli I want to welcome tonight Father John Katalik and Matushka Janine, uh, who um, are traveling from the Holy Lands. They were, you guys were in New Jersey, right? So they were indeed in the Holy Lands and heading back to Cannonsburg, uh, where Father John is the priest at St. John the Baptist Church in Cannonsburg. And of course, our prayers are with you all right now because we know that Metropolitan Theodosius. Um, is um, struggling in his health right now and uh, more than likely is closing, coming to the end of his earthly journey. Um, but um, uh, we, we, it's so good to see you both. Janine and I are from the same home parish, so we've known each other for a long time, and, and Father John and I sort of intersected in seminary, so when they said, hey, is it okay for us to come to Vespers? I said, yeah, because I'd love to sneak a peek at you guys. Uh, we don't get to see each other very often as priests, so uh, so, so great to see you all. May God bless you. And strengthen you. Through the prayers of our Holy Father, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. 